a little bit sketchy, not gonna lie. Hey! Hey! Come on in! in. That's just beautiful. That's main for you guys. Whoa! <laughs> We don't mess around. We don't play, baby. Let's go, baby. This one's going back though. What is up, guys? Today we're gonna be doing a bit of a versus. It's going to be permanent shack versus a pop-up shelter. Zach was kind enough to invite me out to his rental setup that he had out on the lake. I got to stay the night. We had some delicious food, so we're gonna cut to that. And tell me what you guys think. Well, guys, this is my first time ever driving a vehicle on the ice. A little bit sketchy, not gonna lie. We're doing something a little bit different today. I'm meeting up with Zach, or of course, Zachary Fowler, or Fowler's Makery and Mischief. And today we're camping in a luxury hut. Man, I am freaking out right now. I'm gonna be honest. Hopefully I don't go through. I'm trusting in you, Zach. Somebody's excited to go ice fishing. So this is the shelter, guys. Hey! Hey! Come the on in! The legend. The humble abode for the night. <laughs> got some rattle traps going there. I won't mess with your line. That's awesome. I already caught first fish, so you, you lost out. Uh, no, do we restart okay. now that you're here? So what was it? What was it, like a it's fourteen trout? trout yeah, just, uh, it was uh, maybe just over twelve. You know. You guys will have to go see his video to see the uh, yeah. first fish out of this beautiful rental shack. But we've got a cook stove, heat stove type of deal. And then also like an air fryer, it looks like. Yeah, I brought the air fryer. Oh, this was you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is pretty cool, guys. Let's uh, get a hole drilled and get a line and hopefully catch a trout or a salmon before the sun goes down. Brand new ski pants on. Super excited about these. Thank you again, Striker Ice. Guys, check out the link for this gear. Definitely going to be in the description. Oh, gosh. I gained 100 pounds. Oh. There we go, guys. Geared up. Let's go catch some fish. I feel like he has to start breaking like now. There you go. Trap in. Hopefully something happens. Super little baby tiny hook on this one. There's my little bait just swimming around down there. Hopefully gonna catch a salmon for me. Fourth line in here, all set up, and then I think we're each going to have a rattle trap inside of the shack, so that will be five all day. You beat the sunset, that's just beautiful. That's main for you guys. It's cooling right off quick too. I'll uh, check back in when we're doing something exciting or hopefully catching a fish. Housekeeping. Duck trap salmon. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. I've seen this in the stores, but I've never committed to getting it. Wow. I bet if we caught a salmon, we could make a better one. Mm. <laughs> okay, gonna go grab the jig rod and bring it in here, pull up one of the rattle traps, and see if I can't catch a fish on the jig rod while Zach's chefing it up in the background here. Won't show you too much. Like I said, go check out his video if you want to see the full cooking portion of this. Check it out. Go ahead and pull up this rattle reel, which is getting frozen in pretty quickly anyways. We got our bait. Now we do. Micro frostbite uh, dinner bell, which is made out of tungsten. So it should drop pretty quick. Now that's that important in four foot of water, but possible mark down there right now, but we will see. Look at that thing. Ah, it was like the size of a, I don't even know what three popcorn kernels. That's how we measure our lures in popcorn kernels. There you go. Get up a little higher there, butter. You'll feel oh, better. It's way warmer up there. You're okay. She's a good sport. She just, no complaining, just sticks with it. <laughs> That's what makes a good dog. There's 105. Unless you're, did you put fresh bait on that other one as well? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe that's what's going on here. You're reading it? I, I mean, I'm getting mad changes in the bottom. Yeah, but the, your cone is like two and a half, three feet right Don't there. make fun of my cone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that didn't last long. No. Shiner eyeball on a nice little pink frostbite dinner bell. Come on, jump. There you go. Look at that. Ooh, that does look good. I'm interested to see these keto those burger are, buns. Those are our keto burger buns right Probably there. Don't look too bad. No, no. Oh, dang. That is quite the plate. Got a keto burger bun. This is going to be the real review here, guys. Maybe I'll be keto after this. You never know. Oh, Whoa. Geez. I'm going to go a little lettuce on top, too. <clears throat> That was very good. Stuffed mushroom. Right, like and then season the uh, asparagus with Wadopo just or something spicier mm. too. You know, I did the asparagus with salt and my kimchi spice. Nice. Which is something I keep using a lot, but. I was going to say that. It's almost a staple at this point. I know. I don't miss the bun. Yeah. And you know, it's one like, of my biggest complaints when you go to a restaurant and they use the wrong bun for a burger. It's too I big. Worked with a, yeah, it's I, too big. We used to have the place that I worked at had a gluten free, which this would technically be gluten free. Well, I guess so because there's no yeah because it's cheese. But, but I'd rather have this. It's made it out of cauliflower like, and like Parmesan cheese. The one that we had was like eating a dang dish sponge. This is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Butter. She like, opted up there with a very much so don't mind me type of yeah, mentality. Oh, oh. Let me just clean that up for oh, you. Oh, you got something on your pants there. Let me get that for you. Butter does not mind spicy stuff. Like most dogs, she's stolen a couple things a couple times where I like walked away from the the mm -hmm. little end table and I'm having dinner. No more. And it's she's no she's eating some like Peppers spicy and chicken wings and, and things like that that I made. Zach, here you go. Let me get... You can use your dog's uh, cushion as a pillow because I'm sure you didn't oh, bring yeah, a pillow there. as well. No, I didn't... You and then pillows on camping trips? It looks like, well, no, and I have a... I'm oh, yeah, and because coat. I forgot my sleeping bag. You've got here. a moving blanket. I got a moving blanket. Well, that is that is the nicest probably moving blanket. It's a I've brand seen. new moving ba blanket from Harbor Freight. Yes. I brought all the other gear in the world that's <laughs> worth, like, thousands yeah. and thousands of dollars. And then, no, then no, I have, like, $4 worth of stuff for sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you have a inflatable mattress. I don't. You? I actually borrowed this. <laughs> so here's a question, Zach. Do I just sleep with the battery at my feet? Because that doesn't seem very safe. Yeah, why not? Oh, oh well, yeah, why not? Doesn't seem like anything wrong with that. Next to it, next to your head, it might be warm. Yeah. I actually did want my head down at that end. Fished out of a lot of shacks before. I have a metal shack that you can't exactly sleep in. It's got a wood stove. It's really comfortable. And then you've seen my pop up on the channel before. This thing was a whole different experience. I, I personally found it was really neat to just be able to be in there with like a warmish floors in your boots. You could take them off, Dry. sleep in there and fish, cook in there and just be like, it's always like something's always falling in. If you got the buddy heater going in a pop-up, it's always Something falling in the slush, pole, yeah. at, you know. Or, yeah. You can't beat 24 seven heat at the end of the day. In my pop-up shack, I've ran into the issues. If you run the propane for too long, condensation builds up. You start melting the floor, number one, and then you get dripping off from the ceiling down yeah. on your bed that's no bueno that did not occur inside of the wooden yeah. nicely heated shack that's the pros but if we want to go con side it wasn't exactly set up for fishability i feel like i would love to be able to lay in the bed and still jig and it's got uh, two beds they flip down unfortunately they flip down so you gotta sleep on top of what you're fishing but you could still be fishing while you're sleeping that Beautiful was just a build. placement of holes yes. and that wasn't even the owner's fault because he had somebody make it yes yeah, and then the guy like didn't put the holes in the beds where he had asked him to yeah so it messes it up a little bit but yeah. at the same time biggest downside for me i think is the fact that we weren't getting on a lot of fish i mean i caught two, i caught two fish during that whole thing very nice fish but like yes. With a pop-up, you're like, oh, I don't like this spot. You move. Move, exactly. Yeah, that's you a know? great point. I and like being mobile. You yes. could hit five lakes in a day if you really wanted to mm -hmm. and, and like try to catch a different species every lake with a pop-up. It'd be a lot of work. It'd be really grinding. If we're talking about mobility, 
this snow, it's raining. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah. moving a big shack like that in this like slushy, wet conditions, it's miserable. You're gonna get bogged down. You gotta go out and tend those too. My pop-up shack, I bring oh, it inside yeah. and it dries out. That's the tending I have to do for that. It blows out a uh, pop-up shack all day in comfort. Yeah, it is. I mean, and uh, standing on the ice, <laughs> number one. You come in, wipe your feet off, it's just like being at home. It was great. Yeah, she's pretty cozy. I was pretty cozy. And so a pop up, you know, Depending is what? what you, how much is, was yours? Price wise, it was uh, two, three hundred dollars, I believe, three, for the insulated version that I have. Of three hundred yep. by with a six by six. Yeah. Yeah, you know, which is a comfortable for maybe three people. Yeah, it's um, not. It's not even. It's tight not with three people. It, it's yeah. three people sitting in there and then looking out the windows at yeah. their tip ups and, mm -hmm. and two people jigging. Yeah, right. And it's not. And there's no like. Late, if you put a cot in there, then that's all. It's a one person thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's and, a one person setup. And if we're talking like price and things, you don't need a snowmobile to haul out your pop up shelter if you got a little gust. Yeah, you unless you're trying to get all the way across the lake yeah, somewhere, yeah, like to a, uh, access somewhere weird. Overall though, I'd say it was a great experience. I mean, not too often you get to camp out on the ice. No, that was have a, a delicious burger and a probably 60 to 70 degree hot. Have the chance to catch a fish. Granted, we didn't just because you pay the money. It doesn't mean you didn't. Get the I did. Fish. I oh, got yeah. two. Oh, well, he did. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't catch anything. And I was the first catch. person to catch one through the holes in yep. the shack. You're, if you're getting into I ice fishing, your first, your first thing to do is to have a pop-up. Yeah. 100%. You know, and for what, about 150, you can get an uninsulated one. Yep. Yep. And if you're in a place brands. that's not as cold as up north, like by the coast here, they could probably get away with an uninsulated one for the, forever. Multi-use too with the uninsulated ones. You can bring those out on your summer trips and pop those. We up used it your... on. We used it mine <laughs> on the uh, the old Water World. Not sure how many people will build a raft and then pop uh, yeah. up there. I think a great purpose for that permanent sleeping shelter would be for families. If you got young kids or whatever, and you don't want them to get too cold, they could be in there watching cartoons while you're out there enjoying some fishing. You check back in, cook lunch in there. It'd be a perfect setup for a family who doesn't want to get really brutally cold. And It's hard enough to get your kids to come and do stuff sometimes. And with the little ice shack, even the pop-up is like almost the only way I can get them to come and want to enjoy it. Yeah. And then, I, then I bring the, then I bring the pop up, and they spend all their time running around the outside of it. Uh, but pop. they come in when they're wet, and they've stuck their hands in the hole one too many times. The pop up is nice just to get out of the weather, but to just be completely dry and off the ice is it's a game changer. That was sure. it was like camping. It's it was like having a camper on the ice. It was kind of nice that way, right, Butter? Man, and those burgers were some good too. Oh yeah, we I nailed like some uh, Wagyu burgers while we were there that were super tasty there you saw in Chris's clip. If I could and have it on exact spot where I wanted to fish, I'd choose the permanent shelter every single time. But getting that to those remote locations, it, it can be a challenge, so. Yeah, if you're doing a, a permanent one, it's like if you live on a lake, someday when I get my lake house, yeah. I'm gonna have a permanent shack out there all winter long. It's just gonna be an addition, basically. Because, yeah, because then you can go out and tend it and make yeah. sure that it's not freezing into the ice. Yep. You could just go out there do a little something, it's like a little home away from home. And uh, the pop-up allows you to get mobile, get around, and hit different spots and different lakes pretty easily. Around here, we always go to a place, and we almost never go back again. We, we go to so many mm. different places, and we don't usually go, we go there, we catch a fish, and we're like bored with it. Mm -hmm. Whereas like a permanent shack or a bigger shack, like up in Canada, those guys park those things, and they go out there every night and they catch you know, piles of crappie and walleye and like as if their Species. fish are just like stacked from the bottom of the water column to the top with fish and like, but they're still fishing almost the exact same spot all the time. So also the places where these permanent shelters are more popular, they have literal ice roads like yeah. Red Lake. I've never seen it that clear. You can see right down through, I can watch the cracks going and everything here. Um, and ours doesn't freeze solid enough to drive on no. almost any year, but like this year it has been, but mm. only 26 Some years lakes. old and that was the first time I've ever driven on the yeah. ice, so. What do you think? In conclusion. In conclusion. If you're rich, you get a permanent shack and you have your pop-up. Or have some time to build one. Yeah. You don't have to be rich. You yeah. can go to the no. scrap yard and get old scrap wood and. You build a small tin one. Put a wood stove in it. You're yeah. You're working good time. Or a little there. buddy heater or anything just to knock the chill off. Yeah. And... It's so hard to compare the two because like, it's yes, apples it was and oranges. Su super luxury, super awesome being warm in there, being able to cook. But the applications of the uh, pop-up shelter, I can ride in an hour 
toting the pop-up shelter and get into some back waters and stuff with that. Thank you guys for watching this video of the permanent ice shack versus the pop-up ice shack. It's been a lot of fun. Hopefully this gives you guys an idea of what you need to stay comfortable if you're going out ice fishing. And yeah, this has been another mainstream adventure and I appreciate everybody who yeah, watches and uh, subscribes and likes the videos. Leave a comment down below if you think you'd rather stay in a pop-up or a permanent shelter. <laughs> Awkward point at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, folks.